On this video in the Science Basic series, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic water bath. Now, a water bath is needed if you want to get your liquid chemicals warmer than room temperature. Before you start though, make sure you've watched the Science Basic video on how to set up a Bunsen burner safely and check you have the following equipment. This is the equipment you'll need to set up your basic water bath. A tripod, gauze, Bunsen burner and large beaker. So setting up the water bath is very simple. You take your tripod, you put a gauze on top of your tripod and the beaker that will make the water bath on top of the gauze. Now just take a note before I get started of the amount of water that I've actually put in the beaker. It's only about a quarter of a beaker's worth of water because if you're going to add something else into the beaker, the water volume will rise and we don't want it to overflow because that will create some problems. So I'm gonna add the beaker onto the gauze and then if you want to monitor your temperature of your water bath, you can pop in a thermometer. Now, a little safety tip. A lot of students I see drag their equipment towards the Bunsen burner. But this is top heavy and can fall over and then you've got broken glass everywhere and if your contents are already hot that can be quite dangerous. So what you're going to do is turn the safety flame to a roaring blue flame and then drag the Bunsen burner under the equipment. And now I've set up my water bath, ready to go. So you would use this kind of water bath for something like a food test. So let's say I've got glucose, for example, and I want to have a positive test on my glucose sample. I would then add some Benedict solution. Now, Benedict's is an indicator that changes from blue to another color, which is actually red, if the glucose is positive. But it won't do it unless it's very hot. And that's where this water bath comes in handy. So now I just wait. Now, imagine the experiment is finished and over and done with. We need to dismantle all this hot equipment. So the first thing you do is reverse the exact process with the Bunsen burner, pull it out, put it on a safety flame, and then we've still got the hot equipment on here, which is not quite secure, especially if I pick it up with my hands, I could drop it. There are a number of ways that you can dismantle the glassware. We have got a heat proof glove, or you can get beaker tongs. But to be honest, the safest way, and my preferred way, is just to let the whole lot cool down. It will only take five or 10 minutes, and then you can touch it with your fingers. Now the only problem is with this water bath, it doesn't get waters to precise temperatures. So take a look at these next two methods. If you want a temperature of your water bath to be constant and precise, because they will be better than this. The Bunsen burner makes the temperature rise very quickly of the water and then it's difficult to get it back down to the temperature you want if you've overheated it. The second method would be to use a digital water bath which will keep the temperature very consistent throughout the entire experiment. You've got the digital display here and if you open it up You've got the water inside there that will be at a constant temperature without fluctuating up and down, unlike the Bunsen burner's water bath. And the third method to create a water bath would be to use a hot plate. So you just put your beaker on top of the hot plate and this will keep it at a nice consistent temperature as you change the dials here. However, 
It's not as easy to control precisely as a digital water bath. So you might still get some fluctuations happen, just not as much as in a Bunsen burner method. So there you have it. Three ways to set up a water bath. Now, just one more thing. Hot things hurt. So take care whichever way you choose up to set your water bath and stay safe.